footage on GameSpot on E3 Day 2. Right, I got my notes because I need to make sure that I got everyone's names right here. Uh, Grand Bowler, Kevin Murphy. Come on, try it. Nick Belayev. Nick Belayev. All right, and you guys are working on Defiance, which is a bit different from everything else here at E3. Yeah. So who's gonna who's gonna take the shot at describing it? Well, the crazy thing about it is it's a uh, it's a it's a cross uh, it's a cross platform uh, multimedia extravaganza that is uh, a television show on sci-fi. Yeah. And it's also uh, a fantastic MMO uh, third-person uh, online shooter. Wow. That's being uh, presented here at the game, and it, there's a shared mythology where uh, Grant's character Nolan uh, starts off in the video game, interacts with the player character as a non-player character, leaves the game, comes into the television show, and events in the show affect what happened in the game. Events in the game have a ramification on what happens in the show. Yeah. Wow! One of the big Not things bad. that we're really trying to solve or address with this is. Uh, We've been working together from day one so that neither side has to make a compromise. It's all about having the best show that you can have and having the best game that you can have, but together they're better. Yeah. So where did the concept come from? Was it originally a TV show that was pitched that was like, we could make a game of this, or was it a game with a strong narrative element? It was developed concurrently, which is one of the really yeah. cool things. One yeah. is not an adaptation of the other. They're, they're, like not. Not, well, there's not like one platform that has primacy, like when you do the, the video game version of Desperate Housewives, you have to adhere to the TV show's mythology. This is, <laughs> this is one really, of those? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is really a, a very elaborate game of improv, that uh, in the video game they say, hey, what if uh, the Arcfall ships look like this? And we have to go, okay, great. Let's say they look like that, and let's say that they've got these pieces that break off and become something else. And and, and just kind of like figuring out how to make uh, our, our respective mythologies additive as right. opposed to contradictory. So you're the lead. I'm the lead. You are. So you're in both. I'm in both. Have you ever done video games before? Never done a video game before. And the interesting thing is um, I've done, I've watched myself on, you know, screen and on TV for 20 years. I'd never done mocap and I'd never seen myself rendered. And uh, it's a weird experience seeing yourself rendered. You know, it's a completely different thing. It yeah. just freaked me out. And the guys have done an amazing job. I mean, the level of detail, as Kevin was describing before, you know, that's gone into this. You've got a, a true synthesis where all the way from design, the guys at Tryon have said, you know, okay, what do our vehicles look like? But then we've gone and shot. And then we're building those vehicles that they've designed. Exactly. And when we go, when we build them, we think, well, hold on. If they're like that, they can't go up a hill. Or if they're like that, you can't get in them. So, what so you've got to think about is sort of the real physical nature of it because of the show part as well. Yeah. And so Absolutely. in essence, what we're doing is uh, testing everything. So everything in the game can actually work in the world. It's different. It's fantastic. Yeah. So um, in terms of the way the narrative unfolds, are you... Are you, are you performing in both the show and doing additional video game work in an ongoing way? The game premieres April 2013. Right. And my character starts with the player okay. as they enter the world of the game. Um, do we play as you or are we with you? You play with me. Okay. Now what ha what's going to happen is, basically, once the game premieres, the show will premiere in about as much time as it takes me to get from San Francisco, which is the game world, to St. Louis, which is the show world. Right. With the two worlds operating concurrently in real time. Okay. Wow. So what's the, what's the sort of basic premise of the story? Sure. So um, this uh, alien civilization, a uh, catastrophic event happens, uh, seven different races bind together and flee their galaxy, span across the stars, and eventually show up at Earth. Um, unfortunately, we already live here. Um, so we try and negotiate an uh, uneasy peace, uh, but while this is happening, something blows up all the alien arc ships. So the piece of the ship starts falling to the ground, it creates a low-level uh, asteroid field that you know, gets rid of our satellites and our ability to fly airplanes and all that sort of stuff. Um, it also really pisses everyone off and a war starts. And the humans and the aliens just go to this really long war lasts about 30 years. Um, also at the same time, when the ships blow up, their terraforming equipment gets triggered, right? Because they came to the planet to settle it, they wanted to settle it like something they want, so it really changes the Earth, and the Earth ends up being this new Earth that's 
ravaged by war, but also terraforming. So you have some areas of old earth that are very contextual and familiar to all of us. You have some areas that are half, you know, earth that we're familiar with and half alien, and you have areas that are completely alien. And I think that, that for both sides, it really gives us a very broad palette to play with in terms of interesting things that we can do for our players or that they can do for their audience. Wow. It's sort of like the world's become a giant melting pot yeah. in that it's old world earth, new world uh, Votan, which, which, which is the, which the mm -hmm. alien races collectively, uh, and watching a new civilization form comprised of eight different, uh, of seven different races of aliens and human beings. Right. And all kind of coming together and, and you know, on the TV side, it's kind of an immigrant drama. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, re it's really about how we learn to kind of come together, which is also kind of a theme of the game because it's cooperative play. It's not players against players. No, we we, we have both. Oh, right? We're not. we're shooter people. People people <laughs> with guns part. get a little bit aggro. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and and for the game, it's really there's there's a second gold rush set in San Francisco yeah. where the game is. Uh, the terraforming has created this new mineral called gulanite. Gulanite's pervasive in both the game and the show, um, but it's it's the most valuable resource. So in the game, players take on the role of an arc hunter, which is what uh, Grant's is. character is in, in the show. Um, so as arc hunters, you're chasing this gulanite, and a lot of times where it comes, it's either uh, you know, buried deep within the earth and uh, bad things pop up, like the hell bugs that are you know, figured so prominently in our last video. Um, or they come from the Ark Falls, where pieces of the spaceship uh, fall to the Earth, and uh, interesting things happen. So, in terms of how the game and the, the you have got the linear narrative of the of the show, and presumably the choices that the, the players can make. How are you weaving those together? You mentioned well, at the beginning that the two definitely impact each other. Well, well like, like for example, um, we're, we're working on an idea where. Uh, we, there's a uh, there, there, there's a sort of a cybernetic uh, plague that's uh, that, that's connected with a thing called like razor rain, which is um, uh, which is like bits of, of, of uh, spaceship and, and detritus coming uh, from the atmosphere and basically creating rain that basically cuts you to ribbons if you if you if you get in it. You need a really big umbrella for that. Uh, and uh, the player can work uh, within the game. And change the nature of change the nature of it uh, in, in terms of, of, of curing it and helping it in the game world. That then come that then uh, sends the plague into the TV show world, where now it's taken a completely different mutated form, which makes uh, the lives of our television show characters uh, much more difficult because they don't have the option of defeating it the way the player defeated it. Right. So they've created so the player gets to actually have a meaningful impact on what happens in the video game. Now that's that's still kind of at the beta testing you know, stage, yeah. but that's kind of our goal throughout. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you another example is uh, the, the player will uh, help uh, Nolan and his uh, his partner Arissa, who's, who's a hot Arathian girl, kind of like hot Chewbacca to his Han Solo, <laughs> and uh, the player helps them uh, obtain a very important uh, item, a, tr a piece of treasure that they bring in and has a meaningful impact on the first episode of the uh, television show. You can have, uh, you, can have you know, people leaving uh, the world in San Francisco and arriving in St. Louis and vice versa. Um, you can, you know, we, we I, I know there was talk of uh, if people were doing particularly well, players in the game doing particularly well at a, you know, in a certain area of the game or having a certain impact, easiest thing in the world for them to come up in the world of the show. You know, and we we will have um, characters that are that are kind of weaving backward and forward. Right. So when they, how, how, I'm curious how you found out about this and how it was pitched to you initially, because it's quite complex. You know, I um, in the beginning, of course, you know, I'm I'm a meat puppet. I'm an actor, so you know, you get pitched a show or a character, yeah, essentially. And uh, I fell in love with the with the with the script of the show. And then, you know, I met these guys at Tryon, and all of a sudden they were talking about these dual universes, synthesis of two media, and I had to go and get a thesaurus. Uh, <laughs> that took a little while. And then, um, you know, the, the, the further we've gone into it, the more exciting it's become. In terms of being, you know, at my end of things, of actually trying to walk it in time and space, yeah. it's been fascinating. You know, like, like I say, you know, we we see a drawing of a gun, and it's the coolest gun. My, gun, my character's gun, no player is ever going to have. I'm sorry, I mean, you can prize, out my, yours. prize <laughs> it from my dead cold hands, all right? It's a pretty sweet gun. It's yeah. a pretty sweet gun, but then we had to make it exist. And of course, it's, it was an awesome concept, 
But you know, when you call the gun companies, they say, oh no, we can't do that. So we had to find out how you can do it, and we did it, we made it happen. Um, the level of design, the level of detail in both the game and the show, and the elegance of the design has kind of been made greater by the fact that you've got two independent parties coming together through a whole new department, which is how does a television show and, and, a, and a game talk to each other. And, and they're, you know, they're having to come in, each comes in with an idea, and then a third idea is fused out of the two. There's, a, there's an elegance to it, there's a beauty to it. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of uh, kind of making it up as you go along <laughs> innovation that's happening. Uh, because, for example, there's a, there's a very prominent in the video game are uh, these creatures called, called uh, Hellbugs, which are really kind of awesome big bads. And uh, our fourth episode is going to deal with a, hell, a Hellbug infestation uh, in the town of Defiance, and there's a villain involved that's uh, somehow figured out a way to, to weaponize these Hellbugs. So, we're looking at the life cycle, the mythology established in the video game, figuring out how a Hellbug kills, what sort of Hellbug kills, and then how we do that photo reel using uh, Gary Hutzel and his design team. They're the, uh, they're the uh, Emmy-winning uh, team that did uh, Battlestar Galactica and Caprica, and which is re really an amazing group of, of, uh, of visual artists. Have to, have to look at the, uh, the, the, the game uh, elements and then figure out, okay, how do I adjust those game elements and how do we make them photo reel that they can interact on a live action set with live action characters and look of a piece and TV show, but still really have the same look and feel feel and range of motion that they have in the video game. So how does that how does that play with game teams? Because engineers don't like making it up as you go along. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's perhaps a little bit more structured than that. Um, but I, I think, to me, the really interesting thing, having you know been on this from day zero yeah. to where we are today, you know, about four years later, um, it was initially, you know, some guy's room sitting on a couch, kind of like this. Hey, wouldn't this be neat? Cool, let's go do it. Woo! Um, and then now it's at the point when you know Kevin was talking about the amount of interactions going on between the two groups. On any given day, I have 30 or 40 people on my team talking to 30 or 40 people, whether it's sci-fi or part of Kevin's writing team or whatever. And just the 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 level of connection uh, between everyone working on this is just amazing. And it's really gotten to the point where it's not really, oh, I'm a Trian employer, I'm a sci-fi employer, I'm doing this or that. It's a, yeah, we're just working on Defiance, let's just get it done. Yeah. And so I, I think that a lot of what we try and do when, when we're creating this stuff is we have this framework that we can work with. And, and a lot of what we've done in the four years to get to here is learn each other's craft, because they're really different. Yeah. Um, and figure out what works and what doesn't. So when we're when we're figuring out what we can do and doing you know fun things with Razor Rain or passing the characters back and forth, well, we've had four years of thought before coming to it. We know, hey, we can put this off. We're not going to break their CG budget. Not going to break our production schedule and stuff like that. And it's like this is going to work. And you know, hopefully, everyone's going to think it's going to be the most awesome thing they've ever seen. You get like every day is a new surprise. Like who yeah. knew uh, our customer, uh, customer Arissa is is one of the shared characters, um, and she had a. Uh, fur on her costume. Well, apparently fur is one of the most difficult things to digitize in a video game. So we were like, oh crap, okay, so we'll have to phase the fur out of her costume. And, 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 and <laughs> but, but some of the, the, the other fun stuff is Gary Hutzel does all the, the special effects for them. Uh, he and his team came down to our offices the other week. Um, we use the same software, we use the same tools, and when you know he and his team of artists were talking with our team of artists, it was just this you know art nerd fest, and they <laughs> ended up uh, making all these direct connections. You know, get everyone else out of the way, and they're like, we're just going to pass art back and forth, and just that that connection between how things are going to look in the game and how things are going to look in the show, whether it's the clothes or the weapons or the cars or the hell bugs or something like that. It, it's the level of connection is going to be so deep. So this is like the first time anything's been this deeply integrated. I mean, people have experimented. There were some kid shows that that dabbled with it. There was a there was a Nickelodeon show that did it, but it was literally just it was a cartoon. They made a game, and the two kind of talked to each other. But this is like an ongoing. This thing. is. So there's been nothing like this. Are you finding that as you move through that you feel like you're defining like a new way of the way that the media is going to click together moving forward? I mean, do you get a sense that well, okay, this is kind of how it's going to be? We're, we're, we're trying because. No one, because no one's ever done it, it's a little scary because no one's ever done it, but it's also really liberating because if somebody's got a great idea, 
there's no one there to say, well, that's not really the way you do that sort of thing. It's like, because there, there really is no strict definition of how you do this sort of integration. So, right. I think when I say we're making it up as we're going along, we're really just sort of, we're, we're, we're actually, we're, we're charting uh, unpreviously nav yeah. navigated. We're, we're pioneering, uh, right? Paths, yeah. We're going, we think this is the path that's going to take us to the valley that has the awesome stuff in it. Oh, okay, no, we got to go the other way. Uh, you know, so there's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of that trial and error, but I, I think the thing that, you know, we certainly get out of it is the creative process in this, where you really are doing something new and it really is a unique approach, it's supremely gratifying. So, the season, so sci fi is, uh, it's kicking off, you said, April? Game, uh, yes, the game, game kicks off April 2013, yeah. and then the television series right behind it. They're lockstep. And, it, and in terms of the, the sort of season rollout, is it sort of locked? The, is the first season, it's, they've committed to the whole, the whole first arc of the story? Oh yeah, we, 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 will, we, will have, uh, we will have shot it all uh, before the first episode uh, begins, uh, begins to air, because it takes a lot of very careful plotting, because we have, uh, we, we have basically timelines of where, where everything airs and where the video game is, so we know that when X character leaves the game and comes into the show, we then know that they are in for so many episodes, they go back into the game and they change the plot here. We know that when X episode happens here, this is going on in the game because... Th this is probably the best planning either company has ever had. <laughs> it's because of logistical and execution. And only because it's been forced to happen, I think, yeah. So I mean, so there's a there's a an actual timeline that the game has to adhere to, or is it as I experience it, I'm entering a timeline and I need to be consuming the other media? I, I, I think you know, going back to the core of what we're trying to do is we want these two experiences to be absolutely great experiences by themselves, and then if you're experiencing both of them, they're going to be better together. Right. So I think that if, if you talk again how, how Grant's character user. Nolan comes into the game, right? Stolen the gem, drives away from San Francisco, just to St. Louis. Well, if all you've done is watch the premiere... That was a spoiler there. <laughs> oh, we've been saying it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, he's going to hop out of the car in St. Louis. He's clearly on the run. Yeah. Has this gem, right? Some illicit contraband. You know, as a watch the show, Okay, it's this fast, frenetic action. He's on the run. You got the setting. If you played the game and you helped him get the gem and you understand all the backstory, you get this depth of understanding that no one else is going to get. And really, what we're trying to do is be additive to each other, right. right? If all the game is is oh, the episode happened and I'm just replaying the episode, no one cares about that, no. right? That's all the stuff that's been done before. That's the stuff we're trying to consciously avoid with the fines. Right. So have you played it? You said you'd never seen I'm yourself. I'm waiting to play yeah, it. Yeah? yeah, no, I haven't. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it today. Oh, wow. For the first time. So did you do all the facial capture did as all well? Of that, yeah, which is incredibly strange. Like I say, I mean, it's, it's one thing to see something filmed, like a photograph of yourself. Yeah. But to be rendered like that, and then somebody else go off and do whatever they want with it. Like it's not, you know, well, not necessarily. A I, <laughs> it's not necessarily my performance. They stole me, yeah. essentially, and they've gone off and they've run around. And the funny thing is, is I'm much better when they go off and run around and, and do what they want with You're me. You're much more athletic in the game, right? I tell you what, I defy gravity. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm about 20 years younger in terms of what I can do physically, so uh, I'm more than grateful to try on for that. Yeah. yeah. The, the fun that we were doing our uh, our first movie, we we're going to be revealing the digital version of Nolan. And we're like, okay, this is great, we'll set it up. Oh, we haven't shown it to Grant. Maybe <laughs> maybe we should do that. And so we sent one of our producers on a plane up to uh, the set to show it to him and make sure it was okay. And we got to show around to the cast and the crew. Yep, no, and then, you know, and then um, Rob who came up, you know, he, uh, he, he got to come down to the back lot and actually see the town, which is, again, you know, additive in terms of us as a team. Watch everybody walking around, look at the, you know, look at the costume, the wardrobe, the weaponry, bugged me to hold my gun for a while and get a couple of photographs. That's going to be a big demand, that item. Um, and You're talking up this gun in a big way. It better be awesome. It's pretty sweet. It, yeah. yeah? It's pretty sweet. It, it you go like existed. this and it shoots its entire clip. It is oh. spectacular. Nice. A couple of 50 cal uh, chambers underneath a fully automatic handgun. Wow. Just in case you get a big bug. Thing's a monster. Weighs about 20 pounds. Most days I go home. <laughs> Most days I go home. I'm leaning on one side. 
but uh, it looks fantastic, even if I need a chiropractor. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, guys, for coming on. It sounds, it sounds like, I mean, people have been talking about crossing over media in some way, in a meaningful way that's not just, well, here's a brand and there's a game coming out at the same time. Um, we have it, uh, we're covering it on GameSpot. Where we have appointments with you guys. I think we have some, uh, one of our video guys is going over to see the game. We'll have the trailer up on the, on the site. People should definitely check it out. Uh, so this is the GameSpot bonus stage. Thank you very much, guys. We will be back in five minutes for the next segment. Thank you.